Hello, I'm William Armour. I'm a biomedical scientist specialising in um, microbiology and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science at London Metropolitan University. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about how I became a biomedical scientist and what the job involves and uh, Jonathan's going to ask me some questions. I've always been interested in diseases since I was a child, and especially infectious diseases, because um, people got colds all the time and I used to wonder why do people get colds. Um, people get chicken pox, why does everyone have to get chicken pox when they're a child? So that really stimulated my interest in infectious diseases. Another thing was my grandfather was a diabetic and he um, had bilateral amputations unfortunately and I, I sort of wondered why, why do diabetics have to get amputations because they said that that's common in diabetics and he had gangrene which is caused by an infection and I'm thinking how do people get gangrene so my interest has been stimulated since I was a child by just seeing people around me with, with diseases and illnesses. So I wanted to, because my interest in how people get sick, I wanted a job which sort of taught me how the biology behind disease basically. Well I'm from Scotland as you may be able to tell from my accent so we did Scottish hires there and I had a look around to see what sort of options there was in a sort of healthcare related profession and uh, I found about biomedical science or laboratory technicians as we were called at the time and I also wanted to join the army because I wanted to travel a bit and I, I thought I would be able to see some infectious diseases, tropical diseases with the army. So I went to the Army Careers Information Office and they had uh, the Army Medical Corps and they had a whole list of professions like physiotherapy, radiographer, nurse and laboratory technician. And I didn't know much about laboratory technician at the time but the information sheet looked great. There was diagnosis of disease, looking down the microscope, uh, looking at blood films, analysing blood samples. So I decided to, to join the Army as a biomedical scientist, well, a laboratory technician at the time. And so the Army train you as a multidisciplinary laboratory technician, so you get to see the overall picture uh, in each laboratory speciality. Because in the Army, you can be sent overseas on your own, and you've got to do all the pathology tests in the lab at that time. Okay, well, the lab in which we're working now um, performs a range of diagnostic analyses on patient samples. Basically, we get a sample from a patient and analyse it and produce information which helps the doctor diagnose, treat and monitor disease. Um, I work mainly in microbiology, although I work in all the other departments. Um, so we may get things like swabs, urine, and we culture them and we find out what organisms are growing, what could be causing the, the disease of the patient. Um, and one of, the, one of the main responsibilities in, in the lab is making sure you get correct results. So obviously quality is a, is a major part in biomedical science. So we need to have standard operating procedures in place. So we know how to do the tests properly and we're doing tests which are the current best practice. And obviously to ensure quality you need to make sure that your tests are giving you the correct results. So you must use standards and controls with every test you do to give you confidence in your results to make sure that people are getting the, the correct results for their samples. Uh, and that ensures they get the correct diagnosis and treatment. Because if you give people uh, incorrect results, then they would get misdiagnosed, they may be treated when they don't have the disease or not treated when they do have the disease, so quality is a very major part of biomedical science. Biomedical science is a very practical subject and Teaching at the university, we give lectures to get the basic knowledge that you need to be a biomedical scientist, but we also teach the skills that you need to have to actually do the job, and that's very important. It's also very attractive to future employers that if you've done some of the skills. So when you're training in, in the modules, you do practical experiments, and in microbiology, we get um, students to do um, gram staining, catalase testing, oxidase testing to be able to identify the bacteria which are growing. 
We also get them to swab themselves, maybe the throat to the mouth, uh, culture it and to look and see which bacteria grow. Because one of the things in microbiology is the body, many sites in the body has a normal bacterial flora and one of the skills as a microbiologist you have to develop is to be able to differentiate a normal flora from pathogenic organisms. Um, so we culture the organisms, the students have a look at the plates, see the, the various different um, colonial characteristics where the bacteria grow, uh, so they get used to seeing that there is normal flora present and being able to see just how many different organisms are actually present on the human body, which is very interesting. Um, then we get them to do more advanced tests like APIs, which is a biochemical profile of an organism. It shows us which enzymes that they possess and which sugars they metabolize. And these are all important information in being able to identify that bacteria and be able to identify a pathogen, be able to differentiate a normal commensal organism from a pathogenic bacterium which is present. So yeah, in the lab, the, the university course here teaches many skills which are useful in the lab. Okay, well obviously we can't teach students everything they need to know when working in the lab. We can only teach them the basics and that's the whole point of your university education is to get the basic knowledge which you can build on. So we teach them the basic skills and when they get to the lab they realise that there's a lot more organisms than we actually tell them about because if we told them about every significant clinical medical organism it would be like information overload and you'd think that's, that's too many organisms for me to, to know about. So we tell them about the main important pathogenic organisms for example like Staphylococcus aureus or Streptococcus pyogenes. Uh, Salmonella, Shigellus. We, we go through all the various types of samples that they're going to receive in the laboratory and in some of the practicals we do give them simulated samples. We, we do give simulated um, stool samples, urine samples to look for a urinary tract infection or a diarrheal illness. Obviously we don't use um, pathogenic organisms like Salmonella in a practical because that would be too risky but um, we give organisms which would normally be found in stool like Escherichia coli um, just to show that there is a normal flora in stool samples as well. So the, the main difference between university and the lab is when students get to the laboratory they realise there's a lot more information to know when you actually get to your lab. It was surprising at how many different diseases there are, how many conditions can actually affect the body how many different laboratory tests there are for all these different diseases, plus how many different microorganisms there are which cause disease in man. Um, there are thousands of different types of microorganisms, only a few affect humans, but there's still many thousands w which do, so you need to know quite a lot about different organisms. And just the sheer number of biological tests that can be done to look at and investigate all the different diseases there are, you know. And before I did biomedical science, I used to think that you go to the doctor, they'd make you all better, but so you realise that some conditions are chronic conditions and the laboratory plays a role in monitoring the progress of those conditions, monitoring, i.e. the levels of some drugs that people are on if they're toxic drugs, or measuring uh, markers which can show disease progression or disease reduction, uh, and that helps the doctor to maintain that patient on the optimum therapy for their condition. The highlights of the job are actually seeing some interesting conditions. It's not good for the patient, but it's good for us to see interesting organisms. It is good for the patient in a way because we diagnose them so that they can be treated um, straight away. Um, and that's one of the things about laboratory work. Um, you need timely uh, result production. There's no point in your lab being the best lab there is uh, if getting great results if the results are not getting to the doctor on time so the doctor can take action as necessary on the, the results obtained. Okay. So the highlights are finding can good um, interesting conditions, knowing that you're part of the diagnostic team, the multidisciplinary healthcare team and you are helping patients to be diagnosed and treated and helping them to get better. So I think that's one of the highlights of the lab. 
Low lights, uh, you don't really want to k focus on the low lights of a job, but one of the things, that, again, is you don't get patient sort of fe feedback from patient progression. You give, you make the, give the results, the diagnosis is there, but then you don't hear how the patient has fared. So sometimes you do if you go to case studies and things held in the laboratory, interesting cases. But a lot of the time you don't know how the disease progressed or, or what the outcome was, the clinical outcome. So that's one of the things in the laboratory, you're a bit isolated from the clinical situation itself. Um, another low light you could possibly highlight about um, pathology work is sometimes that the workload can be such that you're very busy and um, it may just seem at times like you're just a factory worker pushing samples through a machine or something like that. You know. But um, it's worth it in the end. It's a very worthwhile profession and a very g great job satisfaction when you diagnose an interesting condition and you know you're helping patients to get better. I've been doing biomedical science now for 25 years and obviously um, PCR wasn't around when I first started, but, but all these advancing techniques like PCR, even ELISA's um, immunoassays have become more sensitive. Um, before, uh, for measuring very, very low levels of certain chemicals like hormones which are in very um, low concentrations, you would need to use radioisotopes which have their own sort of health and safety implications. Um, but ELISA's have become a lot more sensitive. You've got PCR um, and you can b diagnose tuberculosis, for example. You used to have to culture it for eight weeks before you could give a negative result, whereas now you can do a PCR straight away and that patient can be treated straight away on the basis of a positive PCR result. So advances in techniques have enabled the lab to give out significant results a lot more quickly than maybe we could have before with the use of PCR and things like that.